Next we will create a curved ledge on the lower level of the skate park. Using the arc and offset tools, we will create a polyline that matches the curve of the concrete base. Then we will extrude the polyline to create a base. Finally, using the extract tool, we will create the top of the ledge. Switch to a left isometric view and center the drawing over the lower level of the skate park. Use the arc tool with the second mode, three points mode, to trace the curve of the upper edge of the concrete base. Move the cursor along the straight edge of the concrete base. When the Smart Cursor Q endpoint appears, click once to start the arc. Move along the curve until the Smart Cursor Q midpoint appears. Move the cursor back along the curve about halfway between the start and the midpoint. Click a second time to set a point for the arc to pass through. Move the cursor back to the midpoint and click once more to complete the arc. Next, use the offset tool to create a closed polyline and then extrude the polyline to create the ledge base. Activate the offset tool, enable the offset by distance and offset original object modes, and click on the offset preferences button. Set the offset distance to 0.6, check the close open curves option, and click OK. Click once on the inside of the arc. We now have a closed polyline. Activate the Push-Pull tool, enable the first mode, Extrude Face mode, and select the face of the polyline. Tab into the floating data bar and set the distance to 0.6. Press Enter or Return twice to extrude the polyline. Now let's create the top of the curved ledge. Activate the Extract tool, enable the second mode, Extract Curve mode. Click on the Extract Preferences button and check the Create Planar Objects option. Move the cursor over the upper, outer edge of the base. When the edge highlights in red, click once to select it. Click the green checkmark button in the toolbar to extract the edge and create an arc. Next, activate the Offset tool and change the distance to 0.75 in the toolbar. Click once on the inside of the arc to create a closed polyline. Activate the Push-Pull tool and extrude the polyline to a distance of 0.3. Finally, give the base a turquoise fill color, the top a gray fill color, and place the two objects in a group. Using the inner boundary mode of the Polygon tool, we will create a curved bank on the outer side of the lower level of the skate park. Switch to a right isometric view and center the drawing area over the curved corner of the lower level. Activate the Line tool and make sure Automatic is set in the plane menu in the view bar. Move the cursor along the straight edge of the concrete base. When the Smart Cursor Q endpoint appears, click once to start the line. Move the cursor to the right along the green extension line. Move past the edge of the concrete base and click once more to complete the line. Activate the Polygon tool and enable the second mode, Inner Boundary Mode. Click once between the line and the edge of the concrete base to create a closed polyline. Select the line and delete it, as it is no longer needed. Activate the Push-Pull tool and extrude the polyline to a distance of 1.5. Now activate the Deform tool and enable the Taper Solid mode. Make sure the Symmetric mode is not enabled. Click once on the Extrude to select it, then click once at the bottom midpoint of the vertical face. Make sure the vertical face is highlighted in blue. Now move the cursor up to the center of the face, click once. Move the cursor down to the bottom midpoint and click once more to taper the face. Finally, give the curved bank a turquoise fill color. Let's create another bank with multiple tapered sides. We will start with a simple rectangle and then use the push-pull and taper face tools to create the tapered bank. Switch to a left isometric view and center the drawing area over the middle level of the skate park. Activate the rectangle tool, enable the corner-to-corner -corner mode, and make sure automatic is set in the plane menu. 
move the cursor along the inner, bottom edge of the concrete rail. About a quarter of the way along the concrete rail, click once to start the rectangle. Move the cursor down and to the right, tab into the floating data bar, set the delta x to 7.25, make sure the delta y is negative 1.5, and press enter or return twice to place the rectangle. Without clicking, move the cursor over the rectangle, the rectangle will highlight in red, indicating the automatic push-pull mode is active. Click once and set the distance to 1.25. Now activate the Taper Face tool and enable the Picked Face mode. Move the cursor over the extrude, press the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, and when the bottom face of the extrude highlights in red, click once to select it. Then move the cursor over the long vertical face. When it highlights in red, click once to select the face. Move the cursor towards the back of the extrude. When the taper angle is about 40 degrees, click one last time to taper the face. Note that there are multiple snap points in this area. You may find it difficult to set the angle to 40 degrees. However, if you hold the back quote key, you can temporarily suspend snapping. This will make it easier to set the angle to 40 degrees. Next, let's taper the left side of the bank. With the Taper Face tool still active, select the bottom face of the base by holding the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac. Then select the left side face. Move the cursor in, tab into the floating data bar, and set the taper angle to 60 degrees, and press Enter or Return twice to taper the face. Repeat this process for the right side of the bank. Note, you can use the Alt or Option key to select both the bottom and right side face. This will allow you to taper the other side without adjusting your view. Finally, give the tapered bank a turquoise fill color. Next, we will create a tapered ramp on the lower level of the skate park. Then, using the push pull tool, we will create a tapered ledge on the ramp. Center the drawing area over the lower level of the skate park near the curved stairs. Activate the rectangle tool and enable the fourth mode, three point rotated mode. Click once on the top edge of the concrete base between the stairs and the tapered planter box. Move the cursor along the edge towards the stairs. Tap into the floating data bar and set the length to 6.75. Press Enter or Return twice to set the second point of the rectangle. Now move the cursor up and use the floating data bar again to set a length of 3.25. Move the cursor over the rectangle and use the automatic push slash pull mode to extrude the rectangle to a distance of 0 0.85. Activate the Deform tool and enable the Taper Solid mode. Make sure the Symmetric mode is not enabled. Click once on the extrude to select it. Then click once on the top center of the extrude to set the taper center. Move the cursor to the right horizontally across the extrude. Click once more to set the direction of the taper. Move the cursor in, tab into the floating data bar, and set the taper ratio to 0 0.3. Now let's create the ledge. Switch to a top plan view and activate the rectangle tool. With the three-point rotated mode still enabled, click once at the base of the left side of the ramp, about a quarter of the way across the ramp. Move the cursor across the ramp, acquire a smart point on the bottom right corner of the ramp, follow the extension line down and to the left. When the smart cursor Q 45 degrees slash align appears, click once to set the second point of the rectangle. Move the cursor down and to the left, tab into the floating data bar, set the delta x to negative 0.15, and press enter or return twice to complete the rectangle. Go to Model Extrude and set the extrusion to 1.5. Switch to a left isometric view and activate the Line tool. Move the cursor over the right side of the ledge, when the Smart Cursor Q midpoint appears, 
click once to start the line. Move the cursor to the left and acquire a smart point at the intersection of the ledge and the top edge of the tapered face. Note, you may need to press the T key to set the smart point at the top edge of the tapered face. Move the cursor up along the extension line and click once at the top of the ledge to complete the line. Repeat this process on the other side of the ledge. Next, activate the Push-Pull tool and enable the Subface mode. Click on the line on the right, next click on the ledge, then click the face between the line and the upper right corner of the ledge. Now move the cursor up until the preview is past the edge of the ledge and click one more time to remove the section of the ledge. Repeat this process for the other side. Finally, give the ramp a gray fill color and the ledge a turquoise fill color and place them in a group. To complete the obstacles of the skate park, let's extract the bottom of the bowl to give it a different fill color. Center the drawing area over the bowl on the upper level of the skate park. Activate the Extract tool, enable the Extract Surface mode, and click the Extract Tool Preferences button. Check the option for Select Faces and make sure all other options are unchecked. Move the cursor over the bottom of the bowl. It will highlight in red. Click once to select the face. Click the green checkmark button in the toolbar to extract the face and create a NURB surface. With the NURB surface selected, give it a turquoise fill color in the Attributes palette. You will notice that the fill color does not appear correctly. This is because the NURB surface intersects the top surface of the concrete base. To see the fill color of the NURB surface above the concrete base, we need to move the object up slightly. With the NURB surface still selected, switch to a front view. Hold the Shift key and press the up arrow on your keyboard. This will activate the Nudge command and move the NURB surface up slightly. Finally, switch back to a left isometric view. You will see the fill color of the NURB surface is now fully visible above the concrete base.